Good morning, everybody. Bit late with this video. Friday morning, 9.41. And we last played on a Monday evening. However, it's taken some time to fully digest the events, the results, the fruits of the labor of Monday night and what this means going forward. It's taken a bit of time. We all knew, we all knew what was needed. Um, the tail end of last week when I did my last video on my way up to uh, to North Cornwall for a fantastic run here, by the way, a lovely couple of days. Um, we all knew that we needed up, needed to beat Leicester, get three points from the last two games, but ideally beat Leicester at home, finish, this, finish our um, James Park season on a high, and then we'll be in the Champions League with no pressure left on our travels um, down to St. St. James, Stamford Bridge, I do apologise. However, results went our way over the weekend. Liverpool, Liverpool slipped up, drawing with Aston Villa. Wow. So now, all that's needed was a draw. One point against Leicester City. Avoid defeat at home in our final home game with everything on the line, all we had to do was avoid defeat against one of the worst teams in the league. And I don't like, I, I would love to see Leicester stay up because I think it would be a shame. And obviously they won the league in 2016. They won the FA Cup, I want to say, 2020. You know, that they, they've, they've been a success story of the last decade. But they've, you know, consistently finished in the top six, you know, fifth, sixth, pushing for fourth, not quite getting there. But then this season, it's all of a sudden, it's fallen off an absolute cliff. But anyway, that was the remit. That was the, the brief. What was required, what all it was, was avoid defeat against Leicester at home. Brilliant. And I've just had a tractor pull out in front of me, go down the side road I wanted to go on. More time to do the video then. Bloody tractors. Right. So, what was the team news? What was the team news? Our standard back five, Nick Pope in goal, Kieran Trippier right back, Dan Byrne left back, Fabian Cher right at centre back, and Sven Botman left centre back. Prior to the game, it was Bruno, Sean Longstaff, and Joe Linton. I thought, oh, I haven't seen this midfield three for for a, for a week or two. This would be good. As the game kicked off, or because I, I came down with like two minutes to go, because I was putting my daughter to bed, and I thought it would take ten minutes, and it took about twenty-five. Morning stories, etc. So I raced downstairs. My wife, bless her, I'm slowly, slowly turning out. She's like, oh, um, Joe Linton's not playing. They got someone else in instead. He's got himself injured. So I was like, right, obviously Joe Linton's injured in the warm up. So who comes in? Elliot Anderson. Fantastic opportunity for the young lad to get at least, you would have thought, an hour under his belt. I think he got about 75 minutes under his belt. It would have been nice for him to, to get the full 90, you know, but the last time he started a Premier League match was obviously against Liverpool at St James' Park and he was hooked off early. Through no, no fault of his own, it was nice to see him compete and he was on the pitch for um, Newcastle's best moment and contributed to the best moment. Onto the front three then, we had Callum Wilson through the middle, Alexander Isaac on the left, and Miguel Almira, Almira on the right hand side. I was hoping slash expecting Maxi to start. So I, I think that, that would have been nice to, to give him a right good go at a struggling team. A team who would have been hoping or a fullback Castagna, Castagna who would have been hoping not to be bombarded. Now, Isaac had his moments running at him, stretching him with um, some tricky dribbling, etc. But they were moments. Isaac was venturing in field a lot more, looking to link up and get in the box. If Maxi had started, Castagna was in for an extremely long night of running hard, being twisted all over the place. And with Maxi just constantly giving him problem, 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 problem. Isaac's looking to bypass the fullback and go into the 
central areas. Maxi wants to beat the full back and head down the wing or into the central areas, but he will not do so before beating that full back. So, I'm not going to dwindle too long on the game because the performance is almost irrelevant, it was the result of the matter. But we completely dominated that match. On another day, we would have won 4 5 6. Um, so, just looking back off the top of my head, Wilson hit the post, I want to say, twice. He missed an a, a easy ish header that by Wilson's standards you'd expect him to score. Um, at the end of the first half, we had him, he had a shot cleared off the line. Um, Miggy hit the post with a volley. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Isak, oh, Isak had a couple of good chances that you'd expect him to do slightly better with. Sean had a couple of shots. You know, we, we peppered their goal and it just, it just wasn't happening. On a night where we just needed to avoid defeat, it was almost like the players knew that as they were pulling the trigger. I'm not saying they did. Um, I'm not saying they thought that way, but it was almost like, well, this is, we don't need to score. The players weren't radiating that, but as a fan watching the game, it was like, well, this is just typical. The one night that we don't need to score necessarily, we fucking can. And we've hit, you know, just off the top of my head, Six against Tottenham at St James's. Four against, um, four or five against Brentford. Four against Villa. You know, we, we've hit some big score lines at home this season. We've been spoiled all season for goals. But the one night where we needed to get, well, we not needed, but we could have done with some just to settle the nerves. It wasn't forthcoming. Um, but we dominated the ball. I don't think we pressed them as much as we could have, but then again, it wasn't that game. We pressed Brighton, obviously Brighton 4-1, uh, we pressed Brighton hard and high up at home, or high at home, because that was what was required. They were playing out from the back. That was what we needed to do, and we were constantly presented that opportunity to do so. Leicester were not playing that game. Leicester, it was pass if we can. Any sort of pressure will thump the ball long go wide quickly so we, that negated our press and you've got to say for the vast majority of the game it was the right it's a crack game plan by Leicester because they got away with it on another day if we'd taken our chances that game plan would have looked extremely foolish and stupid probably within half an hour 40 minutes particularly half time but we couldn't take a chance, so that's that. It was a, it was a strange feeling because we had the relief of Leicester not scoring in the 92nd minute or whatever with their first shot of the game, I might, I might add. Their first shot on target, certainly. When Pope pulls up that fabulous save, uh, Madison puts the ball in, Castagna. Not the best shot in the world, and it was somewhat at Nick Pope, but you, you've got to praise the concentration levels. You know, this guy's had nothing to do. When you, you factor in uh, half time as well, nothing to do apart from goal kicks, pretty much. Not even that. For the best part of an hour and three quarters, the, the one minute he's called upon, bam. Don't click the fingers. One minute he's called upon, he's on the ball. He makes the correct, um, the correct save. Fantastic. At the end of the game, it was, it it was points dropped. But for me, it felt a little bit like points dropped, and then it clicked. If we'd have won the game and been winning, um, yeah, if we'd have won the game and scored a few goals, perhaps the realization of Champions League qualification would have clicked in. The gear a bit earlier but it didn't it, it took a minute and then just this disbelief took over like we've actually done it I know we've been on the cusp we've been in the top four for the vast majority of the season pretty much certainly the majority if not the vast majority we've been in the top four we've been third for a long time nip and tuck with Man United I know we've we've since gone back down to fourth because Man United have just beaten Chelsea 4-1 to take a third position but it doesn't matter 
We're in the top four. We qualified for Europe. Eddie Howe qualified for the Champions League before Eric Ten Hag. Just let that sink in. Eddie Howe qualified for the Champions League with Newcastle before Eric Ten Hag did with Manchester United. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, Lily. I know, we're in the sun, darling. But it... What does this mean going forward? I did a video a while ago where I sort of questioned whether we were ready for Champions League. In terms... All right, darling. I'm probably going to have to cancel this. In terms of in terms of our squad. And at this present moment, we're not. Because at the very least, it's an extra six games into the season. Into the calendar, an extra six games. You think the group stages, if we don't make through the groups, we're going home and away against three other teams. But we want to be competitive, excuse me, in the Capital One Cup or the Carabao Cup. Just call it the League Cup. I forget who the sponsors are. It was the Worthington Cup, then it was the Capital One Cup. It was the... I don't know. It's been so many. Um, let's just say the League... We want to be competitive in the League Cup. We want to be competitive in the FA Cup. We want to be competitive in the Premier League. And we want to be competitive in the Champions League. So it's a tall order. It's a lot of football, that. Come on. Just fucking let us out, man. It's 10 o'clock on a Friday. He was in a rush. If you're working today, you should already be at work. Um, a competitive landscape for us now. Extremely. And I think it's going to be... And I don't think... This is not a pessimistic take. Or a down-in-the-dumps, doom-and-gloom opinion. But I think it's fair to say it's going to be more difficult for us to qualify for the Champions League next season. Than it was this. When you just look at the opposition... City and Arsenal, I'm pretty confident will be up there again. Man United, I think I'm going to go from strength to strength. Chelsea will have to sort themselves out. There we go, she's sleeping. My little, my little niece in the back. Um, Chelsea will have to sort themselves out. Liverpool will come again. Then you've got the added threat of Aston Villa and um, Brighton will be looking to emulate us. And they'll be thinking, what if Newcastle did it? From being near relegated last season at one point, to then the following season coming back and qualifying for the Champions League in that short space of time. And let's be honest, we haven't spent an awful lot of money. We have. But in terms of what other clubs are spending, not a huge amount. Not a huge amount. We, so what did we spend in the summer? We spent uh, about 10 million on Nick Pope. I want to say 15 on Matty Target. I want to say 35 on Sven Botman. So what we on then? We're on 60 million quid. And then I think it was 60 on um, Alexander Isak. So 120 million. Not huge when you look at Man United spending 80 million on um, Anthony, etc., on one player. Chelsea, Chelsea will have to come again because they've just spent so much money. And although players such as Mudrick, who they spent 80 million quid on, and I highly rated him, I really did. I'm not sure I did any videos on this. But uh, while I was in hospital a bit last year, I did I did an article for Newcastle Fans TV, a long article talking about kind of my direct, how much I rated him, how perhaps this was the time for us to get him. Um, I, I didn't think we'd be able to get him in the January. I thought it maybe this summer, but obviously Chelsea pounced. And just talking about his quality, and he has got undoubted. Fuck off, Tesla. Undoubted quality because you don't get man of the match at the Bonabal in the Champions League playing for Shakhtar Donetsk if you're not the business. Uh, but yeah, all these teams will come again, and like I said, Aston Villa and Brighton in particular are the, the ones who'll be looking to emulate us, looking to do what we've done, and they, they'll be looking thinking, why can't we? Why can't we? You know, Aston Villa. Over the last 
X amount of years they've been in the Premier League, let's say, when did they go down? I think they, did they go down with us? Let's just say the last five years, they've spent more money than we have. I'm pretty confident in that. And they've received more money through um, sales. Jack, really? It's 100 million. When was the last time we sold a player for 100 million? When was the last time we sold a player for 50 million? I can think of 30s and 35s. Sissoko, one album. But um, it's. I think next. I, this summer, I, I was convinced that this summer we weren't going to go mental. And I still don't think we're going to go mental in terms of just paying over the odds. But we are going to have to be as smart, as savvy, as sharp, and as cute as we've been in the last two or three transfer windows. Obviously, I said 120 million, but then you factor in the 45 we paid for Anthony Gordon and the three and a half we paid for. Um, gosh, I can't remember the name, that's embarrassing. The young right back, um, Ashby, from West Ham. So that brings it up to nearly 170. Um, yeah, we're going to have to be as smart as we've been in the last two or three transfer windows this, this summer, even more so. The opportunity sort of opens up a bit, but it closes as well, because that might sound daft, but we've now got the a wider net in terms of players who um, are available to us, who would want to come to us. Players from every league in the world, particularly in Europe, will be looking at us. Player, so what I'm trying to say is, players from League 2 to the top of the Premier League will be looking at Newcastle as, a, um, as an idea, as, as a, good, a good option. Obviously, I don't think we're going to get anyone from Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool, or Man City. But you, that calibre, you, you've got teams from the top of La Liga to the bottom of La Liga who will be thinking, Oof, Newcastle might be in for some of our players. But Germany the same, France the same, Italy the same. But then, I'm not doing a very good uh, job of explaining this, but you should, you should know what I mean. But then, the net is drawn even tighter because we're going to be looking now they're all the players that are available to us but the ones we want is in that tiny tiny niche um, bracket of improving you know we're in the Champions League we want players that want to take us on in the Champions League that's a small number in relative terms but even smaller when you look at who else are going to be one of these players just from our league, it's going to be people like Manchester United, Man City potentially, Arsenal, Liverpool, and possibly Tottenham, Chelsea. Even though we're in the Champions League and Liverpool in the Europa League, I still think that Liverpool have got more of a draw in terms of history, um, Klopp, the players they've already got. At the moment, they still got a draw, more of a draw. If we finish in the Champions League next season and do well in the Champions League next season, do well in the Cups and finish above Liverpool again, and if Liverpool finish in Europa again next season, that conversation might be different. Um, but yes, so the the catalogue of players that we want is gonna that we will want and be looking at to improve. Our starting 11, in particular, is going to be incredibly small. I'm going to do another video looking at um, areas we need to, excuse me, strengthen our, our squad in terms of bench and starting 11 at the end of the season. Um, I'm not going to do too many videos on transfer rumours because we are going to be linked with every player that's probably playing in the top leagues. Um, and it's going to be absolutely mental. 
I, can't, I still can't believe it. You know, it's the first time we've been in the Champions League in my time of supporting Newcastle. I can remember um, Newcastle in the UEFA Cup. I can remember us in the... Was it still the UEFA Cup when we were there during the Pardew time? Europa League, let's call it that. Um, in the, uh, uh, excuse me, 12, 13 season. Since then, it's been barren with uh, European football. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The last time we qualified for the Champions League was the 0203 season, I believe. And well, just, you know, that just says it all, doesn't it? The first time in 20 years. Um, this is also, I'm keen to add, I'm keen to point out the finest Premier League managerial performance by an Englishman since Bobby. Since Bobby. Incredible. And I believe Eddie Howe is one point at present. Eddie Howe's team are one point behind Sir Bobby's like greatest points tally. Um, so with victory, with victory over Chelsea on Sunday, we eclipse that. Um, game against Chelsea, Stamford Bridge. Historically, not a great place for us during the Ashley years that it was a routine two, maybe three nil defeat down at um, Stamford Bridge, particularly um, during the prime time of Brucey Ball, it was just a two nil defeat and we've got away with that, particularly uh, during Rafa's time as well. A two nil defeat and it could have been more, we've been played off the park, etc. Now we can go to, to Chelsea. They, they've got nothing to play. They are literally just playing for the show. I say nothing. You're playing for the show, and that should be enough. But in terms of um, strategy or league performance or yeah, where they finish in the league, they've got nothing to play for. They're not in Europe. They're not going to be in Europe. They're a million miles away, at, uh, a million miles off it. So, in that respect their motivation is somewhat low and let's not forget they've just been hammered 4-1 by Manchester United so you could argue that that's their motivation they want to right that wrong and also we've we've just qualified for the Champions League uh, I'm hopefully the lads have been allowed to enjoy themselves a little bit we know what Eddie's like he's um extremely professional and I'm sure they were allowed maybe a, a Tuesday Tuesday off go and have a few I'm not saying they would have been out on the lash properly but I'm sure it would have been go and have a few uh, few gin and tonics maybe a, a few rum and, rum and cokes and and, <laughs> and see how you go um, so yeah it could be a potential banana skin because we've just achieved the highest of the high um, and with nothing else to play for. But it's the last game of the season. It's the last opportunity to for the fans to see their team. Um, it would have been lovely to get the win at St. James's against Leicester. Obviously, we didn't achieve that, so it'd be nice to give the away fans and those like me who, who will be watching on the TV um, something to cheer. We've got some big characters in the team. You know, people like Trippier, Joe Linton, Bruno Guimaraes, um, Callum Wilson, etc. Dan Byrne will not let this, will not let anyone have that lackadaisical attitude. Sean Longstaff as well. Just looking at team news, obviously, who who's injured? Who is injured? Um, Nick Pope has picked up a hand injury. I don't know if that was during the game. Or immediately after the game. I'm not quite sure. So we're looking at Dubravka in goal. Um, I don't think any of the defenders are injured. Um, see, Joe Linton didn't didn't feature. But from what I've heard, he's going to be okay. Um, Alexander Isaac was obviously taken off with uh, a proper... It looked like his, his calf. His knee or his calf. But he, he carried on. He played on. So that was a promising sign in a way. 
that he, he, he played on and then eventually um, he was taken off. Um, so yeah, it might be a case of, let's just go worst case scenario that John Hinton's injury is worse than we thought. And uh, Isaac's is worse than we thought. So it's probably going to be, I would imagine, to give, uh, there'd be some rotation. I imagine Dan Byrne will drop to the bench. Target will come in. We may see Jamal LaSalle start because, by all accounts, I think it's going to be his last opportunity to play for Newcastle. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was Botman and LaSalle's. Um, Trippier will probably start a right back. If not, Mankio, because again, this might be his last game. Or you might see Ashby get some game time as sub for trips. Midfield, it'll be Bruno. It'll be Anderson and it'll be Sean Longstaff. And that's not rotation. That's just all we have available. We've got five um, central midfield players. Two of them are injured in Willock and Joe Linton. And we've got four central midfielders, really, because Anderson's not really a centre midfielder. But although he played very well, I thought against Leicester, he's more of an attacking wide midfield player. Then up front will probably be, if Isaac's injured, it'll be Wilson, Maxi, and... Miggy, I would have thought. Maybe Jacob Murphy. We shall see. We're in the Champions League. It's confirmed. We are in the Champions League next season. I've not watched the Champions League draw for years. Um, I used to like watching Real Madrid um, years ago during like prime watching Madrid was um, sort of 07, no, 06 to probably... 12, 11, 12. Um, I've had a couple of Madrid shirts actually. Just I just got like taken in by the the glamour, the history of Los Blancos, the Galacticos, and and when I first got into football, they were like the team who had all the names like Roberto Carlos, David Beckham, Luis Figo had just left, Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo, Raúl. Um, obviously they signed Fabio Cannavaro. He was one of my favourite players ever. Then obviously they went on with like Sergio Ramos and Ronaldo, Kaka, Benzema, Alonso, etc. You know, um, anyone who's seen my sort of fantasy team videos I did with my brother on this channel will know how, rad it, how highly I rate Kaka. Um, but yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting to watch that Champions League draw. You know, whoever, there's always one, there's always going to be one big team like European giant, um, you know, we could be in, you think European, who would you class as a European giant? Um, historically, obviously this can't be Liverpool because they're not in it. <laughs> historically, it would be like Manchester United, um, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona, AC Milan, definitely, as a historic giant. And I think there's what? How many groups? Is there eight groups? Eight. Uh, yeah, because it's 64. I don't fucking. For my maths is shocking. Um. Yeah, there, there's however many groups there is. I think there's 12 groups actually. No, no, there's 32 teams, not 64 teams, there's 32 teams, because then we go last 16 quarters, semis, yeah. Yeah, cool. So there's eight, yeah, eight groups. So yeah, you could have Madrid in one, Barca in the other, say, Munich, Milan, Inter, Man U, Man City, and who's like another top European team? Let's say Napoli, because they just won the, the Syria. See, we could be have one of those eight in our group. Obviously, I, I want to avoid drawing Arsenal, Man City or um, Man United, just because we've already got to play them at least twice. You know, imagine drawing Man United in the Champions League, playing them twice in the league and drawing them in one of the cups. It's just like, fucking hell. You know, that's five or six games against the same opponent. So I, I would love to get Madrid or Juventus 
or AC Milan, Bayern Munich. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Imagine Barcelona, Barcelona again, actually, would be the one because of the, the Bobby Robson connection, the the fact we beat them in the Champions League in, in the 90s. It'd be fantastic. But it's not quite sunk in for me. I think it it's had less of an effect on me because I don't remember... I'm aware. I was aware of them because I used to sit on in the papers and on the news and stuff about Newcastle and Champions League. But I wasn't a supporter of Newcastle back then because, well, 2003, I was like nine years old, and obviously being in Cornwall at that sort of age, unless you've got a family who's like football mad, you're not really into football at that age. Um, it wasn't until I sort of secondary school that you're more aware of it. But uh, yeah, it, it's I, I'm absolutely stoked. I can't believe it. I'm a little bit worried about our recruitment. We have to get it absolutely bang on this seat this summer because, as I said, Liverpool and Chelsea will come again. Tottenham might sort themselves out, although I doubt it. And um, it's going to be very difficult for us to maintain. But we've got room in the squad. It's not like we're doing a Chelsea where we're having to like make big decisions about who to let go we've got room in the squad you know the likes of Mankio um Richie probably Lascelles uh, uh, good, um who else have we got Jeff Hendricks come back from loan but we'll be looking to get rid of him so that's at least four though that should be going um be sad to see I like Mankio I think at times over the last three or four years, he's been our best right back when they're all playing well. Obviously, before Trippier came in. Um, I think in the four, the pecking order of the four, he's at the bottom. It's obviously Trips, Kraft, Ashby, and then Mankia. Obviously, we're not going to get rid of Ashby because he's a young lad. We just spent, we just bought um, Matt Ritchie, I'd love to see him playing in the Champions League for Newcastle, but I just don't think it's going to happen. He's hardly played this season, although he is one of our leaders. Jamal Lascelles, be sad to see him go captain, but he's hardly played again. Although when he has played, he's played against Liverpool, Anfield and Man City at the Etihad and done really bloody well. Um, but I think he's he'll be wanting to get regular football. And it's, yeah, Jeff Andre, it's never, it's never happened, has it? So those four, so, so we, we what, what I'm trying to say is we have room in the squad. We have a fairly small squad anyway. So we have a lot of room and capacity to add quality, quality, quality players. And I wouldn't surprise me if we made two, signed two players of the Isaac Bruno Botman quality. And then maybe a, a, a couple more. I think we'll see four or five players come through the door. I think, yeah, two players of that quality, a couple more of the sort of barometer of, like, Miggy quality at his best. We'll get, we'll sign probably a couple of central midfielders. I'll do a separate video on who I think is going to go and why, uh, why I think they're going to go, whether I agree on it, etc. But, it's mad. I think it won't sink in until I see Newcastle United drawn out of that pot alongside. Fuck it. I'm just, it's, it's mental to say, but I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say Club Bruges, Marseille and Bayern Munich. There you go. I've no idea whether Club Bruges or Marseille have qualified, but that's who's going to be in our group. Group Group D. Yeah. D crew VL. Those who know now. <laughs> Idiot. Right, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.